So there's a lighthearted answer, and then there's actually a serious answer. So the lighthearted version is. Hey, Chosen fans. I know you guys are watching this video because you are excited to see my chat with Dallas Jenkins and Phil Wickham. I also had a chat with a Chosen producer, and I will make sure to link that video up here and also in the description box below because you guys are definitely going to want to check out that one as well. So yes, I had a fantastic time interviewing Dallas and Phil, and Dallas did answer a question that um, was discussed in the last interview with the producer. But before we get into that, each day of December, up until December 24th, I'm gonna be on Instagram Live reading one chapter of the book of Luke. So I want you guys to get your Bibles, join me on Instagram Live, um, and read the Bible with me. We're gonna do one chapter a day and we're gonna finish the entire book of Luke from December 1st, which has already started, all the way through December 24th. I will put the, the time I'm gonna do it, all of that on Instagram, so you guys should definitely be following me there. Which brings me to another thing. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I absolutely appreciate your subscriptions. And don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm very active on social media and I like to connect with everyone there. Okay, let's get into this interview. Congratulations on the Christmas special. It's, it's fantastic. I've seen it. Wow. Congratulations. Okay, Dallas, I'm going to go off and straight up and ask you this question. So I talked to one of your producers um, in another video and I asked her, well, you know, you guys obviously love Christian artists on the show. I mean, you're, you're, you're there with Phil. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> See, there you go. Um, what would you think of bringing Christian artists who act and giving them a role on The Chosen? Is that something that you guys like would want to do? What do you think? I've been asking him every day of his life. And he, just kidding. Yeah, well, there's, so there's a lighthearted answer and then there's actually a serious answer. So the lighthearted version is no. Um, I, uh, be, uh, I love Phil, of course, and I love so many of these Christian uh, artists that have come on the Christmas special. I always feel like we're best if we stay in our lane and uh, do what we do best. And, uh, and Phil, what Phil does best is lead worship. But on, on a serious note, um, because we're taking you 2,000 years ago, I think it's actually best if the majority of the actors that you see, you don't actually recognize. Because if, you know, let's, let's say even if Phil was a good actor, which I don't know if you are or not. I'm but, not. Okay, that's what I figured. <laughs> but if like Phil shows up on screen, the first thing people are thinking is, oh, there's Phil Wickham. And it takes them out of the experience. And so there are some great artists uh, who also can act. In fact, Joel Smallbone from Four King Country. Four King Country has a great performance on this Christmas special. Joel's a really good actor. Uh, there may be a time where, where it makes sense, but I feel like in this particular project, I don't know, I feel like it might be a little bit distracting. I'm trying to immerse you into this 2000 year old world. And I think the show has done really well for itself by introducing you to some of these actors that really feel like the characters. So the audience has been split and actually what you said makes a lot of sense. It keeps the show centered around Christ and his disciples and the story of Jesus, which it's the most important thing and we love that. So, okay, I understand. The truth is the show is loved by people all over the world and honestly, even atheists. But you know, there are some people, atheist, agnostic, or people who um, were in the church but really didn't understand the story of the gospel who may see the show and may be like, mm, I don't think I wanna watch. Um, what would you tell them to convince them that, hey, just come and see. Uh, let me see what I did there, yeah. Come and see, check it out. Like, what would you tell them? Well, I'll let Phil actually answer that because you're a viewer. You came yeah. across the show and, and and you, like many other people, were a little hesitant the first time because you thought it might not be very good. But I think agnostics, atheists, people who've been burned by church have a similar fear, whether it might not be because they think it's going to be cheesy, but just because they're, they just don't know that it's for them. Yeah, well, I, I was hesitant to watch it because I, I personally have I have a faith in God. I have faith in Jesus. I believe in him. And so, and I, I've just, I've seen so many pieces of media over the years where I've thought, man, I, I wish, I wish that was a little bit better. I wish it wasn't as cheesy. And so that's why I was hesitant to press play on this thing. Cause I was, just, I just hoped so, so I hope to God that it was great, you know? And, and when I, when I watched that first episode, I remember getting watery eyes at that last moment when Jesus comes on the scene and I just thought this, this is a special thing. God's in this and whoever's making this is excellent what they do. And later on, I got to meet Dallas and I'm still a huge fan of the show. Um, so being invited into this Christmas special has been a, an amazing honor. But as far as telling other people about it, um, well, I would say that the, the existence of a person of Jesus is undeniable. Right. It's just it's just what what are you going to do with him? What are you going to believe? He's either he either lied about who he was. He's either crazy 
um, or is he, or it's all true, you know, and you got to, everybody, if they if they pose the question, they can, or they can ignore it, but if they ask the question, it's one of those three things. And, uh, and I, I, I love how um, The Chosen, it's not, it's not a film, it's not a, a show uh, that's, that's built to preach at people. It's a show that's, that's created uh, to portray a true story. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so as you take in the person of Jesus and you digest um, the light that they shine on the person of Jesus and the story of Jesus, it leaves you with the question, what am I going to do with this? And what am I going to believe of this person? Um, and that, that's why I think it's, it's accessible to anybody because this, this is history. And, uh, and, and it's, this is a beautiful portrayal of this history. Um, and, uh, and so I would say for anybody, for any walk of life, it's not, it's, this isn't a religious art piece. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful art, art filled historical account. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I, I don't have to be Jewish to appreciate Schindler's List, for example. Like I'm still able, even though that immerses you into this experience of a religious experience, a cultural experience, even as someone who's not Jewish, I could still appreciate that. I think that's what we're experiencing with the chosen. There's people all over the world telling us, we'll see, we'll hear from people saying, I'm not a churchgoer or a believer myself. I just enjoy watching this immersive experience in the first century. And then it does get them to maybe know Jesus just a little bit better. And then like Phil said, what you do with that is up to you. Phil, I love what you said about Jesus. Jesus as a historical person is a fact. So that's, that's an actual fact. And then, of course, everything else, the miraculous things he's done, who he is as God, that's also a fact, too. And what I love about this is, well, I come from a, an apologetics background as well. So when you said that, it just, yes, bells and whistles went off. Um, oh, fans, if you have a question about the historicity of Jesus, I hope I'm saying that word right. Yes, I actually did a video about it. You can see that link in the description and I will also link it up here. Um, yes, where we talk about the evidence for Jesus Christ as a person using, well, evidence outside of the Bible. So you're definitely gonna wanna check that out. Okay, but yes, Phil, I, I love that you said that. And you know, I have a funny story for you. Um, actually, okay, so in my family, we are huge fans of your music, huge fans. My mom, uh, she's been playing your uh, Joy to the World song a lot, and I'm obsessed with that song too. And I love Battle of the Longs. I mean, we love your music in this family. Well, I used to live in California, and I used to attend Greg Laurie's church. Well, um, you know, you sing there, and you're, you're one of their worship leaders. Um, well, my aunt came to visit me, and you were performing that day. You were leading worship, and you started singing one of your songs, and she was like, oh my gosh, Brittany, I love that artist. I gotta Shazam it. I, I gotta see who this is. And I said, the the that's him. That's the singer. And he's singing his song. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I just love the image of her like just lifting up her phone, Shazamming in the middle of worse. Just like, who is this artist? It's amazing. Tell her I say hi. Now this question was asked by a fan, and the fan says, um, does being aware that the chosen is being used as an evangelism tool by Christians affect how you produce? I would say in this case, Dallas, the show going into the future? It really doesn't. Um, and th the fact is when, I, when we sit down to write the show and when I'm on set directing the show, I can't add to the difficulty of making a good show. I mean, making a good show is a very, very difficult thing to do. And it requires so much focus that trying to think about how it's gonna be responded to, whether it's going to offend or excite different people groups, all the different religious groups that have now come on board to the show to, to, to enjoy it. Um, now there's even more pressure than there was two years ago, knowing now that people watch it and they actually, like you said, they use it as an evangelistic tool. Or for many people, it's, it's their means of connecting with their family and bringing them passion, bringing their, reigniting their passion back towards scripture. If I start thinking about that while I'm writing, I'm gonna start trying to avoid certain truths because I don't wanna offend someone. Or I might try to do something just for the purpose of getting more likes or more views. I can't be worried about that. I have to be focused solely on pleasing God who is the author of this whole story. And so I know that may sound like an odd answer and I don't mean it to sound dismissive, but I really don't think about the audience when I'm making the show, other than making sure things are clear, that people aren't confused. Uh, that's, a, that's the worst thing that can happen when someone's watching a show is if they're just confused. But I do, other than that, I have to just concentrate on what God wants. And that's why when we do get criticized, it really doesn't affect us because the decision has already been made. It's not like criticism is gonna make us go, oh shoot, I guess we should do something different next time. 
Uh, we really do want to just be focused on uh, making a good show and then honoring what we believe is the intentions and character of Jesus in the Gospels. Now, Phil, your song, Battle Belongs, has gotten many of us through difficult times. And friends watching this, if you haven't had a chance to listen to Battle Belongs, please listen to it because it encourages you that the Lord is fighting on our behalf. So much of what we go through is spiritual warfare, so you definitely need to listen to Phil's song. Okay, yes, back to you, Phil. So yes, um, many of us have gone through difficult times and have listened to your song. What words of encouragement will you give to someone who has either lost a loved one um, and or they're waiting for news, or they got news already that is probably not the best. Maybe some of those people grew up in the church and they know Jesus died and rose again for them, and they know the Christmas story that he was born in a manger, and they know that God is good and that he loves them. And maybe watching the show like The Chosen, as good as it is, especially the Christmas special, what if it just like gives them a certain feeling that when they watch it, they think of death, that even if they want to go to heaven. They probably just don't want to go right now. Um, what words of encouragement could you give them to encourage them to, yes, watch The Chosen. It is good for your soul. And this Christmas special will uplift you during this time. Christmas definitely, it carries a lot of emotion for each one of us. A lot of memories growing up, a lot of memories now. Um, and we understand that very, very well. Um, what I love about the Christmas story, um, when we get Santa out of it and 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 big block box stores out of it. And we, we get back to what are we actually celebrating here? Um, and the, the, the Chosen Christmas special portrays it so well, is this incredibly humble moment um, where Joseph, it, even it doesn't say this in the scripture, but they portray it in a beautiful way. Joseph even like has to shovel out manure out of the stable. So Mary has a place to sit down. And this is the way that the God of the universe chose to come into this world. And even the people that were present at his birth, he didn't say, go find the rich people. Go find the popular people and the kings. He said, angels, go to those shepherds, some low-class people, and tell them to come. That's who I'm welcoming in. And in every story about Jesus, we see a God who doesn't say, bow to me, for I'm holy and you're not. You, say a God is, you see a God who says, come to me, all you who are weary and tired, and I will give you rest. You see a God who touches the ones that no one else would touch, who hangs out the ones with, that no one else would hang out with. The God that we celebrate at Christmas is not the God that we always experience, think we experience at church. The God we celebrate at Christmas is, is a humble God that knows each one of us and accepts each one of us and forgives each one of us and, and has come to meet us right where we're at. Our God can say, hey, I, that pain you're going through, I went through right. the worst pain. Our God can say, hey, that sorrow, that loneliness, I was lonely. Our God can sympathize and empathize with all that we're going through right now because he met us right where we're at. And that's that's the it, there's, a, there's a heaviness to it, but also the joy of Christmas is that God is with us, not just next to us, um, but with us in the sorrow, with us in the pain. He was there and he is there. And so um, I hope that that uh, brings some hope to people that are maybe in a dark place right now. Jesus came into a dark place so he could shine light um, all over us. Yes, all of that is so true. And and at the end, they have to just blast Battle Belongs. I know, but, uh, I'm just <laughs> yeah, Phil and Dallas, it's been a pleasure talking to you both. Thank you so much for chatting with me. And I know the fans um, are looking forward to the show and they, they haven't seen it already. And we're excited for season three and all that you have coming for it. Thank you guys. Okay, fans, um, what did you guys like from this chat with Dallas and Phil? First of all, they're fantastic. Don't you love their friendship and the work that they've done and that they're doing? Oh my gosh. All right, do you have any thoughts um, about this interview and what would you like to see in season three? Please put that in the comments below. Who knows, maybe Dallas will check it out. Also, what do you think of Dallas' decision not to put Christian artists in major roles or even in the show at all? other than as artists. Also, what do you think of the news that Dallas does not plan to put any Christian artists who act in the show? Do you support it? Why or why not? I know you're still gonna watch the show either way because I love it. Yeah, I love the show and I actually do agree with his opinion now. As much as I would like to see Oh, a Christian artist I love in a role. I agree with you, Dallas. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. And um, of course, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. It's pretty much at Brittany Valadez and everywhere except for some places. So I'll put that in the description box below. And of course, don't forget to check out my website, bravelydaily.com. Until next time, I'm Brittany Valadez for bravelydaily.com. God bless and I'll see you in the next one. Oh,